Hello everyone, happy May. Hope your May is going well. I am ready for my vacation. It's in two weeks. I'm really excited. This is going to be my first time going out of the country in, I think, over 15 years. Because I was 15 years old. And, as always, obligatory, if you have not purchased my book, I'm going to leave a link in the description, as always. Or you can check my link tree. Please check it out. So all week I've been talking about, I'm reviewing, I'm glad my mom's dead. I'm glad my mom died, excuse me, by Jeanette McCurdy. I listened to the audiobook version. It's so weird not having a book to be like, look, here's where I liked XYZ. So, no, I do not have a book because I listen to the audiobook. And I'm going to make a note. I'm going to say right now, support your local libraries. Uh, that's where I rented the audiobook from. And I also have the Libby app. So please support your local libraries. It's good because it's good for funding and it's good to show that people actually use the libraries. So let's get right into it. Um, usually I give an author biography, but the book is her biography. So I'm just going to give some background, like a synopsis of it. So it's a memoir. Uh, the author is Jeanette McCurdy, and I'm just going to give the synopsis. In the memoir, McCurdy discusses her childhood as a, as a successful child actress, her brief foray into a career in country music, and the troubled and controlling relationship she had with her mother, Deborah who died of cancer in 2013. Uh, she describes her strained relationship with the producer at Nickelodeon. She referred to only as the creator. Uh, BuzzFeed News, BuzzFeed News, and other sources speculated it to be Dan Snyder. It definitely sounds like him. Um, from what I know about him, he hasn't been uh, in the best light recently, especially with the recent documentary, um, Quiet on the Set of other Nickelodeon stars talking about their experiences with him. So he's not looking good right now. Um, however, I will say this is like random, but he is suing. So we'll see how that goes. It was released August 9th, 2022. And she recently, um, I'll have the synopsis twice. She recently celebrated it being 80 weeks, I think, on the bestseller list. And that's really good. I can't do math, so I'm not going to say how long that is, but it sounds like it's been, okay, so it's 12 months. How many weeks are in a month? Four. Sounds like a long time to me. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, so that's really good. So let's get right into my pros, my cons, my overall opinion, and I have a rant. So my pros are, he's a good storyteller and a good uh, narrator, so I put them both together. Um, the voices, the descriptions, and the emotions, like, she really makes you feel like you're there where, in whatever moment she's describing. She was very detailed, and sometimes it was at two uncomfortable levels. I'm not going to spoil anything, but there is, I will give a, there are some moments that are a little, that made me a little, I don't know, squeamish. Um, I'm just going to give a, a warning. She does talk about several eating disorders, so... I don't want to spoil anything, but if you can just guess probably what some of the details were. They were very detailed. And what else? But yeah, but it really lets you in on her struggles. So it lets you... Things bother me. Let me do it again. Okay. But yeah, it really lets you in on her struggles and lets you know, like, what with all of the details that were going on in her life... Um, up to the point of her book. I want to say she writes until she's like 26 to 28. Uh, if I had the book in front of me, I could tell you. But, you know. Let's see, what else did I say? Oh, she also adds humor, which, you know, it was fun to hear, like, in her voice. Um, and it did it did break the tension a couple of times. So that was that was nice. Uh, at some point, you could tell, though, that she was uh, maybe going to cry and got emotional. So that was 
you know, of course, hard. Uh, but it was very engrossing and brings you into her life. Like, you really feel like you're right there with her. Uh, I talked about this in my short video of, like, talking about Christmas and even, like, in her house or her apartment when she moves out of her family home. Like, you feel like you're right there with her in every moment. She's very detailed and very engrossing. Like, you really feel like you're really there. So, um, she's a really good writer. So, hey, you know. Of course, you know, it does have very sad and parts and stuff like that. But, you know, she she gets through it. She, Of course, like I said, she has some emotional points. Uh, my second pro is that it's very intimate and honest. She has a realization about things that make her question her whole life and talk and talks about what they mean for her. And she's not just honest about her family relationships, which are all, I'm not going to spoil too much, but I've already talked about the grandma not really being, you know, also being evil. But the kind of the men in her life are not really strong, I'm, I will say. Um, and then there's a surprise twist with, um, one of her parents, but I'm not going to say what it is, even though I feel like, I don't know if you would guess, but it was a lot of going on with the families, you know? But also besides that, she also talks about her romantic relationships, which were really interesting because, you know, like on Wikipedia, it's only like one person. So it was really interesting for her to talk about seven different important, uh, partners in her life. And, you know, talking about her first love after being a Mormon, you know. You know, as a former church kid, you know, I could definitely relate to, like, not really knowing what you're doing for love and relationships. Um, okay, I made that point. Also, she doesn't hold it back on how she was feeling and how she, like, feeling in the moment and how she felt in the book. Felt writing the book as well. It was very raw and eye-opening. Like, I feel like this was her way of, like, changing the narrative for herself. Because in the book, she talks about, I'm trying, I said I'm trying not to spoil anything, but I'm, I'm going to spoil this. But she talks about, you know, everybody associating her with the role of Sam from iCarly and Sam and Cat, And, you know, she's trying to figure out her own identity. And with her mom basically being a stage mom and living through her. She also has to find her identity that way too. And she talks about how she's always playing other people and she has to figure out who she is. So that's really interesting. And I actually don't have any cons for this one. So uh, I didn't see anything negative. Uh, I love that she was the one who um, read her own book. I'm going to do read the audio, I guess, read, listen to the audiobook of Britney Spears' book. And that's kind of one of my critiques, but I'm going to talk about that next week. So, but yeah, I love that she has her own voice and it kind of gives her power back. You know what I mean? That she's the one who's telling her story and she's the one who is, you know, opening up and letting it be known, like, what it is that she wants in her life and what it is that, you know, she's doing now. So my overall opinion, she said something, this quote, and it really was like, whoa, I loved it. It said, I'm allowed to hate someone else's dream, even if it's my, even if it's my own reality. So I had to pause the audiobook and put it in my notes because it was so powerful to me. Because so much of her life was lived by pleasing other people. Which, you know, can definitely be relatable for a lot of people, I think. Um, that she had to learn who she was outside of them, which I kind of mentioned already. But yeah, it was, um, as I, I keep saying, I don't want to spoil too much. But she means, what did I say? She means towards the end of the book. Oh, I think I meant to say she realizes towards the end of the book how we as a society idolizes moms and feel like we can't acknowledge that some are, can be bad, which definitely some can be bad. Mom, dads, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, anybody. But especially moms, we idolize like, ooh, the highest relative we have is our mom. And she, uh, so yeah, and I feel like she made a great point because sometimes you can forget moms are people and can make mistakes too. Definitely some more than others, I would say. Yeah, know, some more traumatic than others. Or I guess they would make decisions that traumatize you, technically. Um, so there's that. And, you know, there were some who, some people who are really great moms. And some people, 
you know, they do the work, like moms, they do the work to mend their relationships and they realize, you know what, I did mess up. I did um, ruin my kids' childhoods. Um, there was this one mom who got, uh, had no contact with her kids and she actually realized, you know what, I did make mistakes and you know what, I, I deserve not having contact with my kids. So it's like really, which is not usually, of course, parents' reactions. They just get mad usually. I, I mean, at least if you have to have a point where you cut off your parents, that's it's usually like the last resort. You know, it's not really like the first thing that anybody wants to do. Uh, so I really love this book, even though, of course, it was a lot of it made me sad or mad. I'm about to put mad. Why did I put the E at the end? Oh, no, I, I can't read. Or made me mad. That's what I, I said um, because of the people around her. Um, not just her moms, but the dads were kind of complacent too. So, and then there were other people in her life that I was kind of like, mm, you don't really have her back or this is not really in her best interest, things like that. Not to spoil anything again. Um, I wanted to go back in time and like kidnap her as a kid repeatedly throughout the book because I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I could time travel and get you out of these situations because I was like oh my gosh I can't believe a child has to go through these situations doesn't want to let me log in um especially with her mom because it's just like you think your mom would have your best interest at heart and sometimes they don't they really don't um and yeah I just I wanted to kidnap her give her a hug take her out of there really um i think she's a little older than me so i wouldn't exist to go back in time i guess but yeah i really yeah i really want to go and save her basically that's what i wanted to do like for a lot of things um i love that she narrated her own memoir and it made it even more personal for me and i give this book a 10 out of 10 highly recommend uh this is my first audiobook i ever listened to and it was definitely worth the listen and i've already talked about supporting your local libraries i'm gonna say it again do it um i have the libby app there's another app i'm sure there's tons of apps but yeah you should definitely support your local libraries and so once again i'm gonna have a rant about children being children so here it is it says my rant is called children aren't your legacy uh, I'm once again ranting about letting children be children. LOL, that's my first sentence. I remember reading a tweet that said the reasons people give for wanting children aren't good. It said if you want to have children just to have them, that that's a good enough reason. Um, especially the whole legacy reason because children need their own identity and your child could be a serial killer, you know? So then what about your legacy then? Or they could be a mass shooter or all kinds of terrible things. Which, of course, I mean, people still judge the parents based off of the kid. Um, but I feel like, you know, you have to let uh, your kids be their own kids. And your legacy is to fulfill. Oh, and your legacy is your own to fulfill, not live through your children. Um, I think stage moms like Jeanette's mom, Deborah, need to think. Need to not think of them ever of them never accomplishing their goals and actually do something, things to achieve them. Um, of course, after a certain age, you can't be a child star, but all the effort she put into Janine, she could have put into her own acting career. Um, she could have started with local productions, then worked her way up. I remember there was an actress in the first Black Panther movie. I think she was one of like the council of like, I don't know, I forgot if their country's in Wakanda or, tribes oh the tribes of Wakanda and that was her first movie role and she was like in her 90s so it's never really too late of course being a child star it is too late but uh outside of that you know so it's really never too late uh before she got cancer again she could have put the work into her own dreams kids are their own person and not your legacy um and you know she wanted to fulfill Jeanette to be a child star because she was never able to be a child star 
But there's like so many negatives to being a child star. Like you don't, Jeanette talks about how her childhood was basically like taken away from her, basically. And that's what I think about. Because I'm not saying there's no good experience of being a child star, but I've heard so many negative experiences that I'm like, is it really like worth it in the end? I mean, I guess if you have a better balance, but then you're working. So it's, it's and it's like, I get that children need to see other children, their same age, their same gender, their same race, all of that on TV. But it's also conflicting to me because it's like, I know you need representation and things to watch, but also these children are working and working hard. It reminds me of, um, I saw this tweet about Demi Lovato, how she was the breadwinner and then her parents would try to ground her and she's like, I'm the one making all the money and you're trying to ground me. And that's just crazy to me that you're relying on your child to pay for everything, to be the breadwinner. You're the parent. It's like so reversed to me. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Jeanette McCurdy's I'm Glad My Mom Died, the audiobook version. I definitely recommend it. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get the book, but then it would be kind of nice to like reread. I guess technically I read it, but you know, reread it. I think it has rereadability, if that's a word, rereadability. So I highly recommend it. And if you can support your local libraries and, you know, loan it out. All right. I will see you all next week.